Ratus norvegicus, or more simply, the rat. These little critters have a reputation for plaguing mankind. But there may be more than meets the eye. Nowadays, rats can be used in agility and even trained in search and rescue. Benefits to people for the robo rat. Well, the direct benefits, you know, well, as entertaining as it would be to have a remote control rat, um, it could actually provide us with some interesting uh, ways of looking at the human brain. So, well, again, looking at a rat brain may not exactly seem the most logical way to figure out human brains. Human brains and rat brains share quite a bit of information, quite a bit of uh, the same kind of development. Um, we're both mammals, so that means that we have pretty much the same types of uh, neuroanatomy as they do. So basically same, not same wrinkles, but same bulges, same kind of, we both, you know, we have eyes, we have uh, eyes that move in tandem, we have uh, uh, cerebellums that help us, you know, stand up straight and not fall over when we stand up, st stuff like that. So the research that goes on to understand the rat brain and robo-rat will help us understand human brains a little bit better. That is actually what I think do, do with the robo-rat is because they don't need a whole big area of coverage. You know, if you put an electrode array the size of my, the palm of my hand in a rat's brain, the rat's brain is going to look like a balloon by that point. So, what they do is they, instead they know exactly what area of uh, the rat's brain is what's called the, the whisker barrel. So the, the whisker comes in and uh, innervates one specific area of the brain. So whenever the uh, whisker moves, it zaps this one tiny little area of the brain. So what they do is they take this electrode, this essentially a glorified wire, stick it right smack in that area where the whisker barrel comes in. So instead of the whisker barrel, so whenever something brushes the whisker, it stimulates that. They have a computer that whenever they push a button or whenever they have the joystick go to the left, um, the, it'll stimulate that site and the rat will think, hey, my whisker just hit something. I should probably shouldn't go over there. Um, this is how the RoboRat works. A computer sends a radio signal to a small helmet receiver. It then stimulates the medial forebrain bundle. This signal causes a sensation of pleasure that the rat responds to. It can be used to encourage the rat to turn or move over an obstacle. Just imagine somebody uh, sitting on your shoulder going, go to the left, go to the left, go to the right. Um, the, the trick with the robo-rat is we can't ask it, what are you feeling? You know, you can ask a human, hey, you know, can you move your hand, okay? Or can you imagine moving your hand? Sure. You can't exactly ask a rat to imagine moving their hand or, you know, hey, you know, think about cheese or something like that. Or what does your whisker feel like when it's, or when we stimulate it? So the rat, you know, it's possible that it could simulate uh, uh, an annoyance in the rat, so it goes the opposite direction, so it could just perpetually annoy the rat. It's not very likely that it could cause uh, a lot of pain because uh, all pain, the brain doesn't actually have any pain sensors in it which is kind of interesting. So, uh, you know, you could actually poke a human brain and they pretty much wouldn't feel it, which is kind of creepy. But, um, so what they do is, or, or when you stimulate the brain, you're not actually harming it, but you're causing some other electrical activity in it that's not normal in the brain. So when you stimulate it, it could bring up this, uh, the feeling of whiskers moving. It could bring up the image of a cat in the rat's brain, it could bring up the smell of cheese, something like that, just a memory or a thought about that. So um, it's what that thought is, we have no idea. We have no idea whether we're as you know, making you think about cheese or making you think, okay, there's danger to the right or there's a wall to the right. But uh, it will make the rat think a little bit differently than it would normally if the electrode weren't in there. Well, it's rat. unfortunate that, that you know, we have to do these experiments on animals. Um, these animals are treated very humanely. It's not like uh, you know they're in very inhumane areas. When they do um, remove parts of the brain, or when they remove parts of the skull to put the electrodes in, they usually close it back up and allow the rat to live a normal life. You know, it's sure it's got a little wire out of its head, but they make sure that it's um, in mo mostly a natural environment. So um, most of the issues that. Uh, Ethical issues are, you know, how far do we want to understand? We can't read brains yet. I don't think we will be in the near future. I don't think we will be able to in the far future. It's not like, you know, this technology will lead to us controlling humans or anything in the future, or at least, you know, the next thousand years. We're so far off of understanding the brain that uh, 
the ethical issues are more along the treatment of animals than, um, you know, should we be reading brains or anything like that, so.